All right. Well, let's get into it. So what we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about business planning and strategic planning. And we're not going to we're going to do it maybe a little bit differently. I'm going to give everybody a, a quick link. And if um, you'll post that in the notes for me, April, I'm going to give everybody a quick link that will allow you to download my actual business plan. This is the business plan we give to all our private clients. Everybody that we coach has access to this. It's in our training center. Um, they're going to post a link to it and you can all download that. Or do you want to give them a link to the landing page? It doesn't matter to me, April, however you want to do that. Let's get that posted. So you can download it because I want to, as I get into it, I don't want you, it, it's a fillable PDF. So you can open it up and you can literally type in it and fill it out as you were talking about certain things. Uh, you're going to want to, what I always tell people to do is open it and then file and make a copy of it. So you have the original blank one and then a copy that you can write and take notes in and mess and, and work with. The other thing you could do is you could print a copy of it out and have a printed copy and, you know, fill it out if that makes it easier for it to work like that as well. And just, by the way, um, this, the reason we do business plans today is because I want you to know that we're actually 30 days behind. Um, nothing you do today pays you back for 90 days. And so we're always constantly trying to think 90 days to six months in advance. What do we want our business to be doing six months from now? And so what do we have to be doing today in order to make that happen? And so even though we're talking about business plans for 2024, I just want you to know that I'd like you to start those in the, in the, in the, in the, in the future in August, September. And so in August, September, I want you to be thinking about your next year's business plan and re-looking at it and then setting your goals accordingly. So we're a little bit behind, but it's okay. It's better now than, than waiting till January. Cause if you wait till January, you don't even start realizing the efforts of your business plan until you're into the second quarter. And we don't want to have that happen for all of you. So every business, Every life is um, either accidentally created or it's intentional created. And I want you to think about intentional creation for just a minute. And I want you to write that, write those words down, intentional creation. I want you to think about um, your family, your core values, who it is you want to be in life. And ask yourself, is that going to happen the way you want it to happen accidentally? Or do you have to put some things in place and be intentional about accomplishing those things? If you want to be a good parent or a good spouse or a good friend, a good son or a good daughter, a good brother or sister, like what are the things that are important to you? And then how do you intentionally intend on making those things happen in your life? Uh, one, of the, one of the most important things we'll do together is most real estate agents, and I think there's a lot of you that, can, that this will resonate with, most real estate agents create a business that becomes their lifestyle. When you think about who all your friends are, if they're in real estate and all the interactions you have that are social with real estate events, going to board events and showing up at different things, your business becomes your life. What I would like you to do is I would like you to think first about what you want your life to look like, and then let's build a business that supports it, not, not a business that becomes it. I want you to have a business that creates a lifestyle, not a business that becomes your lifestyle. The reason for me that I'm in business is because I found that being in real estate, I can make a boatload of money and be wildly successful and have good life balance in the process. And there's very few things you can do where you have this much upside potential income and the ability to control what you want to focus on in your personal life as well. And so, yeah, you should be able to download the, web, the workbook from the website that we should put you in that link. So it's not just a website. It's a specific landing page merely. So if you'll click on that landing page, you might have to put your name in and then it'll give you the download. If you have a problem with it, then just chat it and we'll let people do that. So I want you to think about building a house. How many of you could imagine building your dream home? Like, have anybody actually ever done that? Did you go through it? Anybody built their dream house or remodeled their home to be their dream house? We did that. So we went through a full, Karen, you did too. Um, we went through two different architects. We had different plans designed. We had some, we had one architect that we told them what we wanted. And they came back and they gave us what they wanted. It didn't look, it didn't even resemble anything that we had talked about because it was their perfect house, not my perfect house. So we fired them and did another architect. And they first did some renderings. And they did kind of a, a, a broad brush strokes of what, of what it would look like. And we said, yeah, we like that, but change this and do that. And then they went back and then they made a blueprint. 
when they made the blueprint, they then went to the engineer and the engineer put a stamp on it that said, okay, we can take these walls out. We have to put beams in here. We have to do all of these things to support the weight of the tile and the heavy appliances and the things that you're going to do. And then once the once the architect put their stamp on it, then the general contractor would come in and start organizing subs. What do you think our unbelievable um, remodel or dream home would have looked like had we not gone through the process of creating a plan? What do you think the chances of us getting what we wanted would be had we not first created a mental creation and then a visual creation and then an architectural drawings? What do you think we would have ended up with had we not gone through that process? All the contractors show up. You say, okay, dig me a hole. Well, how big? Pretty big. Like the framers show up. You say, let's, let's do four bedrooms and three baths and a big family room. Like how would they know how big you think big is if you don't actually take the time and be detailed specific about what you want your, your home to look like? How much more important is your business that you choose to focus your life in than actually building a house. And yet we don't spend hardly any time thinking through first the mental creation and building a blueprint for it. And then the day-to-day -day activity should be nothing more than the execution of that plan. The better the initial creation, the better the blueprint and the plan, the more likely it is you'll have a business and a life that you want. Does that make sense? So the reason we do business plans is this because it's the mental creation, it's the blueprint of what it is we want to have accomplished. I think it's really interesting when um, I ask somebody, okay, where are you, where you want to go? And they say, well, I don't know. I just want to do better. Well, what does that look like? I remember, I remember uh, I was in a goal setting class one time, somebody else was teaching it and said, okay, what's your goal? I said, I want to lose weight. And they said, great, how much weight? I said, well, I don't know. And they go, okay, well, you've already accomplished your goal. You probably lost a couple of calories thinking about it. <laughs> I'm like, if you aren't specific in what it is you want to accomplish, then it doesn't really matter. And so that's what we're going to focus on today is we're going to first, I want you to, we're going to really focus on um, a life design. And then I'm going to show you in a business plan how to actually get that and how to make that come true. Is it okay if I share my screen with y'all? Let me make that full, oops. I wanna go full screen so you see it, desktop three. Okay, so this is the business plan that you should all have been able to download inside of your, with the link that we gave you all. So you should all have a copy of this. You should have it downloaded. Okay, this is your business plan workbook. Now I'm gonna go through it really quick, give you an overview, and then we're gonna go back and focus on a couple of very specific areas. The first one, strategic plan, then your personal objectives, then your business objectives, then your core values, mission statement, a SWOT analysis. Are y'all seeing the plan? Pearl, we're not seeing it. Oh, well. No, we're just seeing a blue screen. Well, way to go. How about now? Yep, got it. Got it? There we go. All right. Whew, good save. Okay, so we're going to go through the business plan. So let me just show you a few things. The first thing is your strategic plan. And this is where I'd like you to go out and I'd like you to give me a view of what you want your business to look like five years from now. So if you could be a genie and you'd say, okay, five years from now, Big V, I want to have, I want to be selling 100 houses a year. I want to have uh, four buyer's agents. I want to be working four days a week. I want you to tell me five years from now what that business looks like. So really way out there. And then I want you to say the same thing five years from now. What do you want to have going on in your life? So what do you want your life to look like five years from now? And you could say, you know, I want my life to be, I work four days, I have a happy relationship with my spouse, I travel, I've got two investment properties, I've got a lake house, whatever the things are that you want your life to look like. I've got my college, my kids college funded, like whatever those life big goals are that five years from now you're yearning to accomplish, I want you to do that. In order to be on track for your five years goals, then the question is, what has to be going on one year from now? So one year from now, if you're going to be on track for your five-year plan, at the end of 2024, what does your business and life need to look like? 
Um, I've paid off all of my debt so I could buy an investment property. I have, uh, we're doing date night, you know, whatever the things are that are important to you, both in strategic and in your business, business and, and life. And then I want you to go back and do six months from now. Six months from now, in order to be on target, if, if we had a call six months from now, so let's say in June, and I was going to review your business plan and see if you're on target, what would have to be going on in your business six months from now to be on target? Bush, does that make sense to you? Give me a thumbs up if you get it. Okay. Everybody Butch, Butch, everybody at Butch gave me a thumbs up. All right, Butch. So six months from now, say, this is where I want my life to be. This is what I want my business to look like. We make small incremental changes based on that big vision. But if you don't take the time to write down the life part of it and you only do the business, you are much less likely to accomplish it. But if you'll take the time to write down the life piece of it, it'll force you to do the hard things in business to make sure you accomplish it. I found that people will do it for others. You'll do it for your kids. You'll do it for your spouse. You'll do it for your parents. Things that you aren't willing to do for yourself. Have you found that to be true? Like we'll move the world for the people we love. But if it's just for us, then we always put ourselves last. So you got to give me the reasons why we're going to do great things. Okay. Then how are you going to know you're making progress? Now, this is a question I'd like you to answer in your Q&A right now. And I like, I like everybody to come on and tell me this one. What would you say is the biggest business problem you have right now? What is your most urgent business problem? What's really going on? What's the thorn in your shoe? What is the thing that keeps you up at night? I want to like think about it. What, are, what is really like, man, this is a legit problem. Let's use the chat box. Seller's not reducing price. I mean, I mean, if that's your biggest problem, we can deal with that. Generating quality leads for my sphere. Nikki, we'll talk about that, young lady. Me? What do you mean by me, Nikki? When you say me, what do you mean by that? How is that an urgent business problem? I'd like you to like to explore that a little bit with you. Chris and Neil. You, want, me, you want me to unmute? Yeah, come off mute. Hi, Nikki. Hi, how are you? I'm doing great. My only challenge really right now is myself and that I have to get out of my own way and do the things that are hard um, that I resist or make excuses to avoid doing because they're hard. I, I have to get out of my own way. I have to be consistent. I have to manage my time more effectively. The opportunities are there it's for me to do the work. Yeah, when you say you have to do all these things and you're not doing them, what are you doing instead? Sometimes you 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 create busy work to avoid doing the things that are hard, right? Um, or for, for in my personal situation, I think I just don't have enough help on my team to so I end up doing all the things and not the things that are the most meaningful. Yeah, that's very common, by the way. And I see lots of other people write the life balance in here, time management, how to prioritize, what should I do versus what somebody else should do. I'm looking at all these problems in here and they're very consistent. Nikki, I just want you to know that you're more normal than you realize. And most people won't get out of their own way. Like it's not even like, I wish you could feel special in getting in your own way, but you're just not, you're normal. And so that's a good thing, which means because other people have dealt with the same thing, we can create a, a really clear roadmap to busting out of it. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna look at these. Not dreaming big enough, Mallory. I love that. I'm gonna help you think bigger. Follow up, conversion of leads, buyers hesitating, writing contracts, balance and home worth balance, listing leads, lead generation, lead generation, consistency in business, launching a new company, buyers and sellers standing on the sidelines, leads, finding sellers, lead generation, recruiting. I, I hear some. There's some threads here. By the way. Um, quality leads from my sphere. We we don't have a, um, there's not a lead problem. I, I just want y'all to just go ahead and know that, that, that there's a prospecting problem. We don't have a lead issue. We have a prospecting issue. And so the moment you say, I need more leads, what you're saying is I need to do more of the activities that generate leads. And when you say it's like somebody else's responsibility to provide you leads versus I have to do what it takes to get leads, that's where, that's where the, the, um, that's where the using excuses comes into play. So as we go through this business plan, I want you to first write down your, your most urgent business problems and also what's going really well for you in business right now. 
what's what are the things that are going really well for you? And I'd love to hear some of those things from you. What's going well? Like, what do you like? What's like, what's the good things that are happening in your business that you like want to celebrate? Nikki, what, what's going well for you? Top 50, without wow. a doubt. Top 50. It's golden, isn't it? It is golden. I've been doing the work ever since I started with Berkman and first read 8651. And it's my number one. I don't know anyone who works it that won't say that that's the number one income producing activity they do. What? How much does it cost you to work your top 50 every day? Honestly, zero. Right. It's zero cost lead gen. All right. If you don't know what that is, I'll share with you later. Okay. Um, things are going well. I have two great buyer specialists. I love that. Um, brand new brokerage. It's very supportive and willing to invest in people. Love that. Lots of experience and learning opportunities, uh, client fulfillment, rave reviews and referrals coming from past clients. They're all great. Marketing's going well. Clients are committed. When you get off the phone, you know the person um, on the other end feels love, not sold. Hey, I love that one, Gus. Um, I'm loving how we're able to uh, give back so much to the community right now. Such a great time. To, you know, it's a great season for giving. Um, still have organic leads coming in. Reviews are good. All right, there's a lot of good things going on. And so I just want you to make sure that you take the time to celebrate the good stuff happening in your lives. We all always like to focus on what's not good and what the bad things are, what the pain is. But like everybody just step back and just give yourself a high five. It's okay. Like, have you ever gone out of a listing presentation and you nailed it and there's nobody around to celebrate with you? And you're like, yeah, you high five yourself in the car. Like, it's okay to do that. It's motivating and when you celebrate your win. So please do that. All right, now let's keep looking at the business plan for just a minute. And then I want you to, um, in, order to in order to be really clear on why you set the financial goals that you set, I believe that you have to have balance in five critical areas. And they are the family, faith, friends, fun, and fitness. I use fitness and food interchangeably sometimes. Sometimes I want food, not fitness. And so what are your personal objectives in each of those areas? And I want you to really think about that. You don't have to do it right now, but as you're doing your business plan, like what, what are the things you'd like to have happen in your family? A couple of family ideas. You know, we, we have implemented 37 years ago, a date night. Once a week, we just go on a date. We go to a movie. As, the, as we had young kids, I'd have to get a babysitter. As the kids get older, then the older kids would babysit the younger kids. We'd have to work around their high school schedules. But we decided every week we were going to have a date night. And whenever we felt disconnected or whenever we felt like um, our marriage wasn't where it should be, we could always look back to, oh, you know, we stopped doing date night. But when that became a regular thing, that made our, that made our lives happier. And it continues today. So could you date your children? Or could you have a date night with your kids, whether they're married or living at home? Are there things you can do to bring your family closer together? If you're not married or you don't have a significant other, maybe it's with your parents or maybe it's with your brothers and sisters, or maybe it's with you want to expand your relationships with friends and do more stuff with people outside of work. So I want you to think about what are your family things that you want to focus on? Faith is very personal. So whatever that means to you, some people, faith is going out and enjoying the outdoors. Other people, it's their religious beliefs. Whatever faith means to you or how are you fill your soul, like how do you get better at that? How do you have better balance in that? And think about what that is. And I want you to write those things down. Uh, fun is a big one because I've learned that if you're not having fun with the money you're making, it becomes hollow really fast. And so as you're making money, how do you celebrate your wins? Um, I think that little things like, you know, maybe the way you play golf or how often you get your mani manicures and pedicures done or whether or not you're um, going into the mountains and doing hikes or getting an e-bike or what are the things you're traveling, whatever that looks like to you, and then friends and then fitness. So write down those goals for 2024 of what you want to improve in all five of those areas. Because if you'll write them down and you really think them through and you verbalize it, they become real and it makes it more, it makes it so you actually will work on it. Um. This is an intense part of a business plan, and I can spend an entire hour on this section right here, and that is your core values. Um, our core values are so important that we hire and we fire to these core values. Um, many, of our, many of our teams that we coach have a set of core values for their business, and they have another set of core values for their family. What are the values they want to raise their family on and around? 
And they're very intentional about making sure everybody understands and knows those core values. You'll notice sitting back behind me on my desk is a set of my core values. Anybody that gets hired has a set of those. They get a plaque that sits on their desk and we talk about it. There's a huge wall. Do I, uh, the question is, do I do the core values yearly as well? Um, I don't really, I haven't changed mine. These are 10 years old. So we've been in business nine and a half years and my core values are still my core values today. And I, what I've learned is with, you know, when we go through, we do our company meetings every Monday and like Taylor is on my team and Rachel's on my, or April's on my team. April, Rachel's not here today. April's on my team. And um, every Monday we have somebody from the company talk about, they get to choose a core value and they get to explain what it means to them and how they apply it in their lives. So ours are choose to be happy, communicate openly and honest, honestly, have and share vision, integrity always, live with passion, uh, live freely. That means debt free, show gratitude, and we persist until we succeed. You can give me any problem that you're experiencing on, our, on a real estate team, and I'll show you how we can deal with it using your core values. Any issue. Agents aren't showing up for daily huddles. Uh, we're not working our daily success habits. We don't follow up with our leads. I mean, I can show you in our core values how you're violating a core value by not keeping the commitments you make when you join the team. So I want you to really take time and think about your core values. These aren't things that I publish to the world and say, look at who we are. These are the core motivating values of who we want to be internally as a company. It's who we want to be for the people that we lead internally. I found that if we have great set of values and we really live them as a company, the company, the employees then become that to the people that we serve outside. And it's a really interesting dynamic to watch. All right. Okay. Then we get into our business statements and these are our mission statements. Like, who are you? What, is, what, who are you to the, to like, why are you here? Why are you in business? What are you wanting to accomplish? Like, I really want you to think about that. And this is part of your governing principles because your business plan will change based on how you answer these questions. What makes me unique? What is your unfair competitive advantage? What are your strengths? Why, why should anybody choose you? And then what do you want to be known for? I love this one. And I've seen some amazing things. You know, um, I can tell you what I don't want to be known for. How many houses I sold. Like I, if, if somebody stood up at my funeral and said, Burl sold 18,000 houses in his career for $2 billion. Like that would be the most hollow thing anybody could ever say about me. Does that, does that, cause does that really matter how many houses I sold or how much money I made? Like I want people to say he was a great teacher. He was a great father. He was a great husband. He was the best grandpa. I want him to say he changed my life because he cared about me enough to pour into me. Like the things that matter to you, what do you want to be known for? The impact you have on the community, the impact you have on your community. All right. And then what do you tend to do better than anybody else? What do you intend to just do better than everybody else? I was talking to one of my master coaches last night. It was a late night call and it was, it was Cleve Gaddis and Cleve and I have conversations late all the time talking about what we're doing for our people and how we're helping the message to what's going on in the marketplace. And one of the Cleve, one of the things Cleve said to me that what he wants to do better for his clients is he wants them to be the best informed person in every transaction so they can make the right decisions for their family. I want my client, clients to be the best informed in the transaction so they can choose to do whatever is best for them because they have all the information. I love that. I love that. I want to put my clients in a position where they make their decisions best on the best information and then they can move forward. And then how do I want to accomplish that in my business? Those are great things. So, and you write those out. Now, when you go through your mission and your vision and your core values and you start talking about where you want to go, it starts giving you clarity on what you want your life to look like. And then we can move into how to build a business plan around that. But if you won't take the time and go through the stuff that is really deeply personal and you're not authentic in your answers, then you won't be authentic in the way we build your business plan either. And those goals that you set will be hollow. When people have a hard time pushing themselves beyond what they believe is possible, it's because they haven't thought about why it's so important to them yet. And so can I ask you all to take the time to really go through those guiding questions and take the time to really think through what it is that drives you and how and what it is you're trying to accomplish in your life? Can I ask you to do it? I'm just asking everybody for a commitment. Yes. If I were your coach and this were a coaching call, then I would say, I'm going to look at your business plan. And that's the first place I'm going to spend time. Love the pinky swears. Thank you, Britt. 
Britannia D. I love that name. Okay, so I'm going to skip through here. And we're going to get right to the SWOT analysis. Now, the SWOT analysis, we're actually going to work on together for a minute because I'm going to have you look at a SWOT analysis differently than you ever looked at it before. By the way, I didn't even know, you know, when I first saw SWOT analysis, um, it was like, it, it, you know, it was a, a professor in a business school in high school teaching me what they teach in MBA school. So if you went out and got your MBA, they teach how to do a SWOT analysis on companies and analysis on, on what their strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats are. And they went through and they taught us how to do it. And I was fascinated by it. But then I started looking at it a little bit differently. And I said, instead of looking at the company's strengths, we weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, I decided to make it personal. What are your personal strengths? What are the things that you have going for you? Um, here's some of the things I would write on mine. I'm fearless. I'm, I'm not afraid of rejection. I'll call on anybody. I'll knock on any door, probably because I was a Mormon missionary for two years in England, knocking on doors. Like you think selling houses is hard? Try selling Jesus. I mean, like I am not afraid of rejection. Like I just am not. And so because of those experiences in my life, I'm not afraid. Um, so I'm fearless. Another thing I would put on mine is I have strong sales skills. I understand how to ask the right questions to find out what people really need. I like to say that I'm armed to the teeth with technology and I'm a freaking sales animal. And anybody that inquires on working with me, I will follow up with them until they buy or tell me to die. I'm tenacious in my follow-up. Another strength would be uh, I genuinely care about the person more than the money. Like if I don't get paid, I don't care. I'm going to do the right thing every single time. Other strengths are I have a big database. I have this great list of people that I've done business with in the past that I can tap into every time I want. I've got a lot of raving fans. So make a list of your strengths. What are the things that make you great? And then, it, you know, strengths are easy. What are some of the things you would put on your strengths? Let's go in the chat box and put some of those in. What are some of the things like, and if you're afraid to, to um, tell me what your strengths are, what would someone who really loves you say your strengths are? What do your spouse say your strengths are? I love people. I'm committed to the process. Love that, Matt. What else? Come on, I only have two strengths. There you go. I'm really good at writing for marketing, creating great response. Nikki, write some strengths in there. What are your strengths? What are the things that you have really going for? What makes you special? Resilient, strong. Mary Lee says, I never give up. I love that. System savvy, large fear that trusts me. I'm determined. Great tools and resources. A strength would be I utilize my great tools and resources. Having the tools is not a strength. Using them is. Integrity is a great strength. There you go. Caring. I understand my numbers. I care more about the people behind them. I genuinely care about, I really believe that. I genuinely care about my clients. I just need more of them, right? I need more people to care about. If people really knew how much you cared, they wouldn't use another agent, would they? Integrity. Love it. Smart, caring, analytical, detail-oriented. Okay, so the strengths are easy. Let's do the hard one next. What are your weaknesses? And when you're filling out your weaknesses, what I like to do on this one is, what would your spouse or ex-spouse say are your weaknesses? What would your ex say your weaknesses are? That's how you get real. You never listen. Attend okay, let me tell you what mine are. I'll tell you what mine are right now. My weaknesses are I hate the details. I love the vision. I hate getting in the weeds. The attention to detail is not my strength. I don't like the numbers in accounting. Oh, failure to delegate and controlling. I'm stubborn. I lack empathy. Those are good. Time management. Me management. I lack confidence. Russ, I love that you're willing to be off. Like when you put stuff like that out there, I like you're being real. And so I think we can work on that. Um, One-sided two times. <laughs> I'm too nice and I'm too stubborn. Well, those kind of seem like they're in conflict of each other. If you're stubbornly nice, that's a good thing. If you're stubborn and not nice about it, it's not a good thing. Not always aware of my surroundings. All right. I love that. Um, attention to detail, afraid to delegate, don't like the numbers. Okay, so it is interesting when you put your weaknesses out there. Now, let's go out. Now, above the word, above, when you look at your SWOT analysis, above this one right here that says strengths, I want you to write the word internal. 
because your strengths and weaknesses are internal to you. These are things that are about you personally. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? You could also do it on your business, but for this purpose, for this exercise, I want to do it on you. Above the word opportunities, I want you to write the word external. Grace, you and I are on the same page with some of our weaknesses. There's strength in numbers. All right. External means what are the opportunities you currently see that you're not taking advantage of? What are things that are going on in real estate that you see as opportunities, but you're not doing anything about it? Um, new construction. <laughs> Dax wrote that in as I said it. Great minds, Dax. Um, investment opportunities. Notice as a default. Absentee owners. Geographic farming. Social media. Video. Community events. Specialization. What are some of the for yeah forbearance foreclosure pre foreclosures geographic farming, social media? Rebecca's like ugh, <laughs> all this stuff, all the things, all the things. Okay, now you don't have to do anything. I just want you to write them all down. Hey, Mary Lee, guess what? I don't care if you ever learn how to use drones, but I think you should always have drones being used. Your sphere of influence. I love Dax. Thank you for putting that on there. Are there current opportunities that you know you should be doing that live in your business right now that you're not really doing at the highest level? Then put it on your opportunities, okay? Now, let's do threats. Threats are different than what most people think. Threats are things that are going on in the marketplace that you have no control of, but you should absolutely be aware of. Interest rates, class action commission lawsuit, inflation, rising cost of home, limited inventory, home buyer's inability to purchase. Like there's a lot of threats, isn't there? How about wars going on all over the world? I mean, that change, like when there's uncertainty in the world, it changes people's appetite for growth and moving up and the things that they do safety when showing homes in re remote places okay so that's not a threat man i gotta think about that that's a that's a condition that you need to be aware of and make sure you're safe it's not a threat you can't control you can control that because you don't go show houses by yourself and so i want you to think about threats that you can't control high home prices yeah you can't control about it next to the word threats I want you to write down the word opportunities to grab market share. What some agents see as threats, I want you to look at as a way to message differently to the market to gain market share while other agents are backing away. Threats are opportunities to grab market share when you know how to message correctly. We do that with, that's what those shift modules are all for. We take a threat in the marketplace, we build a shift module for it, and then we teach messaging on how to communicate to the marketplace to get people feeling from being stuck and not being willing to move forward to moving forward. Very powerful. Okay, so once you do your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, I then, you'll notice that there's several others in here. I want you to give them to people who know you well somebody in business, somebody personally that know you well, that you respect and ask them to do a SWOT analysis on you. It's eye-opening to see that other people recognize strengths in you that you don't see in yourself, or they recognize weaknesses that you consider strengths, or they might come up with opportunities that you hadn't even thought of. And so I want you to really think strategically about who you give SWOT analysis to and ask them to pull it up for you. And then we're going to create a master list. Now I'm going to tell you what to do with these with the SWOT analysis, okay? First of all, your strengths. How could you take the things that you're really good at, your strengths, and apply them to opportunities you've listed on the opportunity side? I want you to focus your strengths on opportunities that are being underserved right now.
Number one, it's your strength. You already like it and do it, and you're good at it. Now, how do you take advantage of a strength with an opportunity that's not being utilized right now? And let's star those. Those are going to become pillars that we talk about later. Okay? Weaknesses. What do you think I'm going to tell you to do with your weaknesses? Hire somebody to do those things. Yeah. I want you to either use technology and systems to become, to get better at it, more efficient with it, or I want you to let it go. You already suck at it. So why focus on it? Like if it's a weakness and you're like, I, I am not good at accounting. And whenever I start a business, my wife, who is a high attention to detail, she comes in and sets up payroll and does the accounting and does the checkbook balance. And I want to see the summary of what it is. And then when it gets too big for her and it grows beyond her expertise, then we hire in-house accounting and then a CFO. It is game changing when you have somebody who loves the details and finds their happy place in the numbers working on them. I'm not that guy. And no matter how much I spend time working on it, here's, the, here's one of the things you have to realize. Like, because it's out of my profile, meaning the high attention to detail, I'm a, I'm a high DI, the S and the C are things I have to really work hard at. Because it's not my natural place, when I focus on the numbers and I focus on the details, I do it at a high level of stress and anxiety because it's not where I'm naturally comfortable. And so because I'm doing it at a high stress and anxiety, it makes me believe that I can't delegate it because it causes me so much stress to do it myself. And I think anybody else is in the same role is going to have the same level of stress. But here's what I've learned in being a leader. If I let it go to someone who has the skills and the temperament to focus on the details, not only do they do it better, they do it better with ease. And they give me what I need to be able to focus on the parts of the business that I love. I want to have and share the vision. I don't want to execute it. Think about that. So I want you to take your weaknesses. And if you can become stronger at them, great. But if you can delegate it, let it go. Just let it go. Mary Lee, thank you for that. It is game changing. All the time spending on your weaknesses could be focused on just going after your goals and just let it go. Do you know how inexpensive it is to hire a bookkeeper? Do you know how inexpensive it is to have somebody take all your receipts and put them into QuickBooks? And then your accountant can give you a summary at the end of the month and a pie chart that shows you if you're making money or not. It's not that hard. What's hard is making the decision to do it, not actually doing it. And then after you haven't done it for a while, you'll never go back to doing it again because it's so great to have someone else doing it. How many of you feel like that about mowing your lawn? Like, you remember the first time you let somebody else mow your lawn? And they did it. And you're like, oh, my gosh, that was twenty five dollars. I cannot believe I've been doing this every Saturday and taking half of my day to mow the grass when I could have been fishing or golfing or just spending time with my kids. Anyway, I, by the way, I don't mow my own lawn and I don't do my own accounting. You can pretty much outsource everything except your spouse. Like you shouldn't outsource that. Everything else, let it go. All right, so we're going to take our strengths, we're going to apply them to opportunities, we're going to take our weaknesses, we're going to create systems or people to take those off our plate, and we're going to create we're going to create messaging, and we're going to learn how to message around threats to create unfair competitive advantage. This is so fun, and then we're going to take a master list, we combine all the SWATs together, you put them into your master list, and get really clear, okay? And then we can say, okay, weaknesses, are we going to learn it and get good at it, or are we going to outsource it? If we're going to outsource it, who are we going to outsource it to and by when? It's time to start making decisions on what and how we're going to do certain things. Okay, I'm not, I don't have time to spend, like, I wish I had more time today. This is really like a three-hour class. <laughs> um, in, our, in our income goal sheet, this is really important because when you put your goal, your net income goal, and you put your expenses in, and then you put your commission structure in, you fill in all the blue areas, it'll automatically calculate all the things that have to, how many listing appointments you need to go on, what you have to do, what your numbers are. This will give you all of your listing goal and your appointment goal. And so take the time to fill in all the blue areas, and then it'll calculate for you. It's a very powerful spreadsheet that'll help you with your, with your income goals and figuring out what you have to do to accomplish that. And then this is the, I'm going to spend the rest of our time on this. Um, if you, I need to just take a quick break for one second. I'm going to stop my share 
And as you talk about the four pillars of income, let me see which master, which coach is on the call with me today. Mallory, Hello. I, would like you, I would like you to explain to everybody the four pillars of income. And so let's just, I'm going to start with, let's say that you have a goal of $100,000 a year, 100K, and your average commission is $10,000, so you need to sell 10 houses. That makes sense? Mallory, I'd like you to take about five minutes and I want you to help people understand four pillars of income and how they have to accomplish 100% of their goals with each of those pillars. You ready? Can you do it? Ready. I can do it. All right. No pressure, right? Um, I am nowhere near as amazing as Burl, but I am one of our senior coaches with Workman. Um, the four pillars is really like creating a foundation for your business. So, um, my business, for example, is really heavy in one area, and that's not good. We want it even, we want it as evenly divided as we can. So you're going to come up with what your four pillars are for your business. Um, there's all kinds of examples. Most people always have top 50 or sphere of influence as one of their pillars. Um, and a lot of people, their business kind of tends to lean towards a lot of that. Um, but other examples might be geo farming, um, open houses, working open houses at a really high level, um, social media. Um, other people have lots of creative ideas like seminars. But what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to figure out, you know, if you need to sell 10 houses, how you're going to get approximately 2.5 houses sold from each pillar. So, um, Nikki, if you want to unmute and add on to that, I know you're also an amazing coach, but yeah. Um, and then you're going, once you have what your pillars are established, you're going to write out, you know, what are those daily behaviors, those things that you're doing, um, to create that goal, to accomplish that mission. So, and I think it's so foundational to your business that, um, I have it written out for all the all of my team members so that I see um, exactly what they're supposed to be working on and what I'm supposed to be working on. And also, it's a really easy, quick reference if, you know, you're deciding on spending some money. I know finances can be snug right now for some people. Look at your four pillars. If you're, you know, wanting to spend money on something that isn't one of your four pillars, that's a no for me. So, um Yay. There you are. Hello. I love that. Okay, so let's start. Okay. okay, so the keys of the four pillars are, let's review them one more time. Each pillar has to generate 100% of your income goal. You can't count it as a pillar unless you can show me how it's going to make 100% of your goal. So let's throw out in the chat box some of your pillars. I love that. There we go. Okay, property management. Okay, so if property management is your pillar, then you have to break down for me how many doors you need to generate 100% of your income goal. Okay, referrals and SOI should be one of everybody's pillars. Referrals, SOI, social media, all included in one pillar. Top 50, that belongs in your, in your referrals. Agent to agent referrals. Okay, so who wrote that one? Okay, Marta, I think that's a phenomenal pillar, but if your goal is to make, if your goal is to make $250,000, how many referrals do you have to send or receive in order to accomplish that? Dwayne, expired and red, expired red X calls, expired for sale by owners, notices of default, those are great. Here's some of the pillars that I found are, they, they consistently deliver. Sphere, obviously we talked about that. Sphere of influence, top 50, right? The second is um, geographic farming. If you're doing a geographic farm and you decide you're going to work a geographic area, it's predictable. You can say, if I send out 100 mailers, I get five calls. With five calls, I set two appointments. Two appointments equals one listing. I know that if I want to increase my numbers, then I have to increase my mailers. And you have to be committed to a farm for 18 months. It's not a quick pillar. And so when a lot of people are pulling back their resources, you can get into it. It's fine. Okay. The next one is um, 
So if you're doing Google lead generation, that could be a pillar. Walk-ins walk -ins is hard to have as a pillar, Doug, because it's not something you control. I would say a walk-in would be bonus business that comes in, but I wouldn't make it a pillar because you don't have control over it unless you're standing on the sidewalk, dragging them in, which I totally encourage. So you think about your pillar and then say, okay, is it something that can generate 100% of my goal? Somebody give me an example of one of their goals. Let's just write, come, give me one of your income goals. Somebody just tell me how much you want to make. I'm going to take you through this process. Okay, so um, let's do Brit Brittany on. Let me see, Brittany, can you come off mute? Are you on video? Yeah, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can now. And hi, good to see you. Hey, how's it going? It's going great. So $250,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, a month? <laughs> I wish. Uh, no, per year. <laughs> okay. Now, hold on a minute. Now, we, we kind of joked about that, but what if it was a month? I mean, that would be amazing. I think it'll take time to get there, but I would love to see that someday. Well, there's there's absolutely no reason that you're not capable of generating that kind of revenue. And um, whatever experience you've had in your life that tells you you can't do that, I just want you to know that's a bullcrap experience, that you're absolutely capable of it. And the only difference between someone making 250000 a year and 250000 a month is the activities that they focus their day on. So what you focus on becomes what your outcome is, okay? I'm going to use two fifty a year right now. I'm going to show you how we double it. So um, what's your average commission? Uh, about... 10,000. Okay. Right? So 10 grand. So 25 homes. Okay. So Brit, how do you say your name? Britannia? Yeah. Britannia. Okay. So Britannia. So um, can we just go ahead and make a decision that all of your deals are going to be listings? Okay. Okay. So we're going to generate 25 listing um, closings per year. Okay. Which is only what? Two a month. Okay. Okay. So you got to get two listings a month. Can you do, is that like, woo, wow, way out there? I could never accomplish that? No. Okay. And so, so what are the activities that you're going to do to generate two listing appointments a month? You can work FISBOs and expireds. You can knock doors. You can do open houses. You can do um, your SOI. Like all of those will generate it. You get to get to pick four of them. And each one of them has to be able to generate two listings a month. But instead of doing two listings a month, can we just say um, like, like how many listing appointments do you have to go on before you get one? Right now, tracking it, I'm at like a 90% rate. Of... Okay, well, you got to stop going out with your friends and cousins. So... <laughs> okay, I, I want you to be at 50%. 50%, okay. okay? So you need four listing appointments a month. That's only one a week. You only need one a week. So when you do your pillars, each pillar has to be able to be broken down to generate one listing appointment a week. Now, is that like, woo, woo, I could never do that one no. a week? You don't even have to get one listing a week, just one listing appointment a week. Okay. One appointment. Okay. That really feels low to me. Can we just do two, just do two appointments a week? Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. All right. So two appointments a week. So you're going to get up every day intensely obsessed with whether or not we got two listing appointments. Now, do you ever do anything to pamper yourself? Do you get your hair done, nails done, feet done, any of that stuff? <laughs> well, you don't get to, you don't get to do it. If you don't get your two listing appointments this week, the way that you celebrate your win and the way you get to pamper yourself, get your massage, whatever it is that you do that makes you feel great. You don't get to do it unless you got your two. Matter of fact, I'm gonna how about, how about this? How about instead of 250? I don't know if you know what I just did you, but we just changed your goal to 500 because when we went from one appointment a week to two appointment a week, we doubled your goal. Do you know that we just did that? I saw that. <laughs> now, what would happen if you made $500,000 a year? How would that change your family? It would let me retire my husband so that he could work with me full time. Is that something he wants or is that something you want? Uh, it's something he wants. Okay. And so is that really important to you? Like genuinely in your heart? Yes. That's, that's a five-year goal for us. Okay. I mean, does it have to be a five-year goal? If you just did two appointments a week, you can get it next year. Yeah. If if we were to the point of being able to do two appointments a week, if I got us there, yeah, in one year, he could do it. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so if you ended up doing 50 listings because you did, you know, two appointments a week and all you did is get 50 listings, that's 500K. 
but you know that with every listing you generate, you should close 1.5 buy side transactions. That means you're going to do 75 on the buy side and your 500,000 just doubled again and went to a million. Um, understanding the single most important thing you focus on every single day is whether or not you got a listing appointment and everything else you do needs to be eliminated. What if I told you this? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write a check for $500,000 and I'm going to give it to you. And at the end of the year, if you got one appointment a week, you get to keep the 500,000. But if you don't get the one appointment a week, you get none of it. You either get all of it or you get none of it. How are you going to behave differently? Is there any way you fail your family and get zero? No way. I, and and now that you put it in those terms, when I really look at it, like my absolute goal every week is to just focus on those two appointments. And if I can just remove the trash that comes in and infiltrates, yeah, it makes a lot more sense. I'm not thinking about everything else. I'm thinking about the calls I need to make. I'm thinking about the door knocking I need to do. I'm thinking about the things that I have to get out there and do to build my business now. You know, if you work like your life depends on it, like your husband's life depends on it because he's killing himself at a job that he doesn't like and he just wants to be with you. What a, what, a, what a sweet man that he wants to get to a place where he can work with you. And every day you do other things that are not consistent with making that happen. You're choosing to keep him working there. It's honestly heartbreaking. <laughs> okay. So, it's a little so, heartbreaking when you put it in those terms. Yeah, because it's not who you are. In your heart, you're the sweetest soul in the world. But then we get up and we allow the whirlwind to control what we do every day. And the whirlwind doesn't move us any closer to accomplishing our goals. You got to get out of the whirlwind and you have to intentionally create the life that you want. Now, I don't care if he ever comes to work with you. I care that he gets to retire and then you get to choose whether he wants to work with you. You can hire other people to do what he's going to do as well when you're making that kind of money and you can just spend more time on vacation like or just getting back or maybe he heads up your nonprofit. Like there's other things that will give you joy in your life. Now, I may be talking to Britannia, but am I really talking to anybody else? Is this message resonating with anybody else? Joe, I'm talking to you, my friend. I'm talking to Lauren and I'm talking to Tammy and Amelia. Russ, talking to you, man. It's like, it's when we do a business plan and I take you through the four pillars of income, I want you to think about whether, if it's a pillar, are you willing to work on it like your life depends on it? Because if you'll give me your undivided attention for the next two years and we focus on the execution of these basic fundamentals, you'll never, ever, ever look at the income you've made in the past as being adequate because you're going to have a clear path to create double or triple or quadruple where, you, where, where you've been. And then once you do that, then you take your four pillars, you build your marketing plan around it. The goal achievement system, and I just so apologize, we're out of time. Um, here's what I'd like to do. Uh, April, will you make give everybody access to the training center in the ramp videos where I go through and I spend several videos going through the, vid the business plan? Just the people that are on the call, like all of you that are here, do you want my whole thing where I go through all of the rest of the business plan? Would you like that if I just gave it to you? Okay, I'll just give it to you. So April, I don't know how you're going to do it, but you can just email everybody. It was here a link and you just give them all access to the uh, ramp program for the next 30 days and let them go through the business plan. You can go through all of the ramp stuff and that'll help you get there. Here's what I know about business planning. I'm going to come off my screen share for just a minute is that right now today, as we're sitting here in the beginning of November, we have an opportunity to change the rest of our lives and you have a choice point and there's a door in front of you that you can choose to go through, but you have to make a decision right now if you're going to go through the door. If you choose to go through the door and follow your business plan, build your four pillars of income and execute like we've talked about, you'll never look back or you can, you can continue to leave the door shut and feel like you might know another way to do it. I will tell you that the people that go through the door and they work with us and they coach with us and we work with them over time, what happens is, is every obstacle becomes easier and the challenges you feel today go away. A new set of challenges are going to come because you're going to be building a team and you're going to be creating leverage. You'll have a new set of challenges, but it's okay because we've been through those two and we just help you break through them. If you're currently not coaching uh, with Workman, can I encourage you to raise your hand and say, come on, I want to have a coaching consult. This is what we do in coaching. You're on a call with a coach where we're talking about your business and your life, and we try and help you figure out what's important to you. 
See, Britannia, when I went through that with you and I help you discover what's really important to you, now that I know that as your coach, how do you think I'm going to use that to help you to do the hard things? I can help take you step by step by step through the process you need to do to accomplish great things. I have another Zoom that's waiting for me to jump on right now. So I apologize that I have to go. If somebody from my team reaches out to you, accept the call, set up a coaching consultation. I'd love to work with you. Be part of the Workman family. And uh, let's have a great 2024 together, everybody. Thanks for being with me today. I'll talk to you all soon.